Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. And you are looking at my Ninth Tyrant for my Nurgle stroke Death Guard army. Replaced the right weapon with tentacles and, and gnashing more under the arm as you've seen there. And generally Nurglified it and made it match him with the rest of my knights. If you watch the channel you see I've got a very big knight army. And this is the largest of the plastic models that Games Workshop do for the knights. There are obviously bigger forgeable ones which again you'll see on the channel soon. Or obviously I've already done a Titan so you can sort of check those out. So the knight tyrant you have to make out of a knight valiant like a lot of the chaos knight kits there isn't a specific kit for it you've got to kit bash it up there are some more uh, chaos knights coming out there's some obviously the new knight codex coming through with a new psychic knight and those kind of things so um they do do some specific chaos ones but actually it gives you the opportunity to kit bash and make it your own so a standard build to start with here just following the build instructions and building it up to the point where i'm going to convert it now obviously you've seen the little whiz around and it's got a big whippy sort of mutated arm so why have i done that rather than having the harpoon launcher bit of difference bit of interest you know it, it just looks very nice the other thing is as well i use tentacles and things because in my sort of theory what the harpoon launcher does in game is it fires you know 12 inches and causes mortal wounds that kind of thing so it's a fairly short range weapon and it's not beyond belief to say well these tentacle arms could expand outwards and you know wrap over the enemy and do a similar thing to what the harpoon launcher does so partly rule of cool, partly also fits in with kind of the background and the guys I play against will not have an issue with me saying that's actually a harpoon launcher. The other side is if you've watched uh, the channel before, I talked very briefly with the new Chaos Knights coming out and in the new Chaos Knight pictures we've seen, there is a new sort of whip arm that can go onto the Chaos Knights and I'm kind of hoping that that maybe you can upgrade the already existing Knights with that bit of equipment. So we'll see. Uh, here's the first variance to the build that you following the instructions when i'm putting the right arm on because this is where the tentacles are going to go i cut off the kind of socket where the harpoon launcher hooks on uh, underneath originally i was going to put a magnet in here and i was going to build off the uh, tentacles and those kind of things with a magnet so i could kind of magnetize the tentacle arms on and take them off and whatever now in the end i didn't do that so it's probably not necessary to have cut this piece off but that's kind of the part of the fun of doing a kit bash and a conversion where you've not done it before or you've just got an idea in your head is be prepared to adapt um, and, you know, change kind of what you're doing as you go. So you, there are a few times in this build where you'll see, and I will show you some of that, where I've done one thing, changed my mind completely and then done something else. So here we are to the first part of the going outside the build instructions is just drilling out the barrels for the melter guns we put on. So when you're drilling out a barrel, just use the end of a knife, stab it into the middle, and use that as a guide to almost guide in your pin drill. So why I'm assuring you that drilling out a barrel isn't anything unusual. When I'm building a model, I try and think of steps that I'm going to take to be a bit time efficient as well, but also make it make sense in the build. So the reason I'm showing the drill out barrel is you drill out a barrel and then move on with that same pin drill in the same session to start drilling some battle damage into this armor. The beauty of chaos, particularly is you can bash and damage and uh, dink all over your armor there. So taking that pin drill, uh, drilling out that kind of uh, bullet holes and impact sections you'll see using the craft knife just to widen the hole a little bit, but also make a kind of teardrop shape with the damage because when you see shell damage it's not a direct circle moving up into a slightly bigger uh, drill bit here and just drilling again some holes across there and i do probably 13 14 holes just across the armor just to make it look a bit you know battered because these are not you know pristine bits of equipment so once you've drilled a number of holes across various sections of the armor i'm just taking the hobby knife brand new blade super sharp um, because if you do this with a blunt knife there's more chance of injuring yourself um, and just cutting little nicks and chips off the corners you know chopping off some drill pieces cutting into the um, imperial symbology as you can see there well, this hobby knife um, is dead easy to use links down below I will put a lot of stuff linked actually with a lot of the hobby equipment and materials I do use as I said before if you've got a local hobby shop go to your local hobby shop and buy your stuff from there because they're the kind of the pillars of community but if you haven't got one or you just uh, want to get it online and get it quick i've dropped some amazon links on for a lot of the equipment i use and talk through during this video so battle damaging i don't go crazy i just chop off some little sections use some clippers you've seen there just to maybe cut some corners off some areas to look like it's battle damaged now the next section is using this stuff this is green stuff will blue stuff this is how it comes how it gets delivered it comes in little bars like this that you then melt down with boiling water i've got a video on how to use this a little bit more and i'll again i'll link that down below but i just want to show you what it is before 
I show the moulds because lately I've just showed the moulds a lot of time or I've just shown the after effects of the moulds without explaining it. So this is what it looks like when you've pressed it onto something. Now these mouldings were all taken off a Glockin model and if you check my channel out and look at the Knights playlist it will show you all the different Knights I've converted and you'll see that original model. Now these are great, this is a quick, fast, easy way of, especially if you're doing a big army like this, making pustules and gross nurgly bits um, and having a consistent you know impression effect across your army you don't have to do this you can make uh, your own nurgle effects with milliput or green stuff as you'll see later but this is just a really really quick time effective way and obviously if you've watched the channel and if you're doing it yourself i've built quite a big knight army now and this has been super time saving so all you do is once you've made the, the moulds you've got little those little green stuff moulds cut it down to the size you want to do so you see that i've probably sliced off half of the green stuff that was around this and i've just kept the pustules and things that i fancied super glued those down onto the armor panels in a variety of areas across the model now we're using liquid green stuff which is a thing that games workshop sells like a bit of technical paste and i'm just pasting this around those green stuff areas to give sort of blend from the armor up to this green stuff because it's probably a millimeter thick and you don't want it to quickly step up so just paste that green liquid green stuff around to give a nice step up and it sort of gradiates now talking about green stuff um three different types of green stuff i've currently got in my possession um i pick it up when and where or i'll pick some offline if i think i'm running out or whatever um really useful just to keep a stock of it in hand one of the biggest frustrations when you're in a project is if you run out of something and you've then got to go and trek and get it so i always try and keep a big supply fairly built up so mixing the green stuff together it's a two-part uh, putty mix it twist it mess with it, it takes a minute or two just to uh, get it so it's properly um, mixed together it's a consistent green color and you can see there and then set it to one side now i don't work with green stuff for about half an hour to get the stickiness out now this is another modeling compound milliput usable on its own but what i'm doing here is making a green stuff and milliput mix so green stuff picks up a lot of detail but it's quite flexible milliput probably picks up a similar amount of detail not quite as much but it's more rigid when it sets now what i want for doing the tentacles on this model is a mix of the two now you see i've just taken a bit of milliput out of that block there i'm probably making this with two-thirds green stuff one-third milliput because i want to take some of the solidity and kind of crispness of the milliput but i do want it more flexible because it is going on an arm so it's going to get knocked but if i did this with pure green stuff i think the arms tend to be a little too flexible so experiment it's a play you could do this with entire green stuff or you could do it entirely milliputs up to you another technique i do there you can see me with the green stuff mold uh, sorry blue stuff mold i'm not going to show you what this molds out but just when you're using this stuff always try and think of what you're going to do with the excess you know so you're not wasting anything so i just have a number of molds to one side for other projects that i'll just cast up now i'm opening something a little bit brand new here from green stuff world this is uh, some of their tin wire you don't have to buy the green stuff world branded stuff you can buy this from a plumbing shop but this is going to form the core of the tentacle we're going to do in the arm so i've just cut a chunk of the wire i'm just test fitting it for broadly in that socket what i want that tentacle to look like and the size it wants to be i'm trying to keep it looking dynamic but i'm also trying to keep it so it's not sticking too far out the body so it's easy to store etc now i've stuck down some parchment paper onto my sort of work table and i'm just covering this with vaseline and this will stop the green stuff sticking when we're working with it and it won't stick down to uh, your table or whatever this parchment paper has just been rubbed so you see i've made two kind of sausage shaped sections that are going to cover the length of this pinning wire now i am leaving probably half a centimeter at the end of the wire sticking out to work from and the other sausage is down on the table now here a biro is your friend and this is a real quick simple way of making a kind of um, tentacle uh, section so using three different sizes of circle here this is the barrel of the pen i'm just stabbing it into the green stuff twirling it and it'll leave like a nodule sticking out um, then you do that with the two sizes so the, the lid has got a conveniently smaller circle and then the inside of the pen the actual inky bit has got another smaller circle now you can see there i pushed a bit too hard went straight through the green stuff um, and cut it out of the, the the actual material so i did think about putting it back in but i thought you know what it's only one piece and you don't notice it at the end so just be careful when you do it you don't press right through the green stuff and almost cut it out so three different sizes of suckers that we're making here you could do more you could do less you could do the whole thing with small suckers the whole thing with big but it is nice to have a bit of a variance makes it look a little bit more chaotic -y, um, and yeah just i think fits in 
quite nicely. Point to note is I've put Vaseline on the ends of all the different bits of the pen material just so that it doesn't stick to the green stuff doesn't come out and this green stuff has been mixed remember this is a green stuff a milliput mix but it's been mixed for about half an hour at this point so it's not super sticky anymore now you will get depending on the temperature of your room you'll get maybe an hour or so of working time with the milliput but if your room's super cold it'll be longer if your room's super hot it'll be shorter so you need to really think about the temperature conditions of uh, where you live so when you make these circles, um, have them so they don't overlap. You don't want the circles to overlap, but you don't want to leave too much space between them because these veins and things will show later how they'll, um, they're will they going to build up and create the, the impact. Now this is just a little bit of a paper clip. Again, Vaseline on the end, and I'm stabbing this into the center of all the little pustules we've created to make it look like a sucker. Now you can use a paper clip or you could use the end of the pen if you wanted, just something to put a small hole in the sec center section. And I do use a sculpting tool or various other things to widen that hole in the larger suckers that we've made. Now, once you're happy that you've got the um, piece with enough tentacles and suckers and things all over it, then it's time to place it on top of the previous sausage we've made that's got the rod inside it. So place it down, place it along the length uh, of the green stuff piece that's got the wire on top of it, and just gently press it down. Once it's pressed down, pick it up and be super careful because what you don't want to do is squash any of the uh, suckers or anything you've done. And just take a sculpting tool or you use a cocktail stick or something like that. And you're just kind of pressing that top layer and kind of merging it into the bottom layer of green stuff to make it uh, sort of hold and stick together. Now, this will seal the edges. We're gonna seal the middle in a bit with some of the textured effects we're gonna do. So press it down, work your way around. Once you've got to that stage, take you know, your sculpting tool again, or it could be a toothpick or whatever, and press down in between the suckers. This will give some texture as well, so it'll make it a bit bumpy, it won't just be the same, um, and it then makes a nice ridged effect going sort of down the middle of it, but you are effectively now sealing this thing together. And when this sets, it'll be absolutely rock solid. At the moment, this is maybe, you know, again, 35 minutes into it being used, this uh, arm is quite pliable, so you can test it onto the model, and make sure you've got it in the right position and you're happy with how it goes. But you can see there, quite a simple effect. Um, you can see it's looking quite nice along there. Now, I've made this tentacle kind of thin at the top, widens down into the curve and then thins out again. So I did that because you watch these videos of um, lizards and things that have got those big tongues that fly out and grab things and it's kind of their tongues and things are fatter in the middle because it thins out when it extends so I did that and then thought yeah it looks all right would I do the same again maybe not but you know I quite like it now you can see there I've made another one that's looping up past the gun and I was just fitting the third kind of tentacle arm and I really didn't like it it was too thick now you can see how easy it was to pull that off because it's not glue jet and strip the green stuff off that metal piece. So if you get to a point where you think, do you know what, I just don't like that, you can start again, because this green stuff will be absolutely fine, it's still workable. And this is where I discovered a new way of me doing tentacles. Now, I don't know if this is new to the world, probably not, I'm sure this has been done a million times. I learned the method I've just shown you on doing tentacles 15, 16, 17 years ago when I was at Games Workshop. Um, and what I'm about to do now just seemed sensible to make it thinner because uh, I put the tentacle on in the method I've just shown you and it looked a bit too fat. Um, so I thought, right, it's taking too much width, especially when it was wrapping around the melter guns. I thought it's just too wide. It doesn't really fit um, how it looks. Personal preference would have been absolutely fine probably if I'd just left it. But here's another way of doing uh, the tentacle to make them a little bit thinner. So this process is exactly the same. I've used the pen and the various parts of the pen lids and things to make the suckers. I'm now stabbing the holes in it. So this is nothing different to what we've done before. When we come to put it onto the support wire, this is where the difference is going to come. So when it came to the, the wire part, same principle. Pick the piece up, spread it along the length of the wire. But this time there's no uh, other piece of green stuff underneath for it to uh, kind of stick onto. So what I'm doing is I'm folding it very carefully with my fingers around the wire, giving myself a piece at the end again where I can hold it. Now at this point I realised I'm going to crush half the suckers if I try and do this with my fingers. So I went and picked up just a, a pair of tweezers. These are army painter tweezers, but tweezers are tweezers. Um, you can use whatever you like, obviously. And again, I put some Vaseline on the end of these tweezers so that it wasn't going to super stick to the bits. And then this is just using the tweezers to pinch the two sides together. Now, this made two kind of impacts. 
one, the tentacle arm ended up being a lot thinner than the other, so a little bit more uh, detail getting into smaller areas. But also where I crimped the green stuff together, it gave a really nice kind of bobbly rigid effect, and I actually quite like what it looked like. Um, and then now it's the same principle as before. Go around with a sculpting tool or a toothpick or whatever, and stab in between those suckers to press it onto the wire partly, but also to put a little bit of texture and interest into that tentacle arm. And you can see the kind of position and angling I've made on this tentacle. So you could do dozens of these um, for the arm piece. And I was tempted at one point to do like 10 or 12 and have lots and lots of crazy tentacles coming out of the arm. But I was kind of happy with how I'd left it at this point. So, um, you know, but you could go wild. You could have lots and lots of small tentacles. You could have lots and lots of big tentacles. It would be uh, entirely up to yourself. In the end, I decided on the kind of four you can see here so i've done uh, the four tentacles one curving up over the armor the big tentacle and two sort of smaller ones then you can see i've filled under the arm with milliput to give like kind of a, a skin base and the piece i've just shown you there again is another two-part mold that i've made of blue stuff and this was of the glockin kind of more that the glockin kind of tentacly arm thing comes out of very good description there, I realise. And I've stuck that into the milliput while it was drying. And I'm just putting some little striations and lines and things around that milliput to kind of make it look like there's some sort of chaos mass growing under this arm. And, and the tentacle arms there are trying to feed this maw with obviously whatever they're picking up and kind of stuffing it in for the power of chaos, etc. When that's done and I'm happy with the detail, I'm now just putting in some little pustules. So these are little balls of milliput and green stuff that when I've had excess, I've just made them roll them around in my hand, let them set. I'm just picking up a pair of tweezers, placing them into the milliput and just pushing them in. Now you can see here, this is not <laughs> exactly an easy bit. I've had a couple of pieces ping off. You'll see another one catapult across the desk in a second. Keep persevering, keep trying, um, and you'll get them in and just place them on and push them into the milliput so that they set. I tend to use three in a little cluster. As it feels nergly and kind of looks cool and that's what you could do if you didn't want to do the cast up pieces from before. So now onto the actual painting, you can see that was just a green stuff wood roller that I've used to make the base. Uh, you'll see at the end I've got a video on making nurgle bases, you can check on that. Now I'm not going to talk through this entire paint process because I've, I've done this on multiple videos now. Um, the one I launched last week talked about doing cracked, bruised and diseased armour on Nurgle stuff so I'll link that down below so you can check it but by now I've done this kind of paint scheme multiple times so it is kind of a flow for me now and I think you know, I like to think I've sort of perfected my personal method of doing the Nurgle scheme now my method is very different to other people's I've seen I like somewhere between the kind of really really dirty grim dark effect and the heavy metal effect I don't like either of those two extremes. I like somewhere in the middle. So my paint scheme is kind of neat and tidy, but also a bit messy, uh, very ink washy and dirty. And it sits for me somewhere in the middle. So I do do a lot of the techniques, you know, a lot of base coating, I put wet blending in there. I do dry brushing, I do whatever, but I don't focus on one particular technique. I kind of use bits of everything. Um, and I think it works particularly well for Death Guard because they're an army that wants to be a bit dirty, uh, a bit mucky. To give you a sort of context about how long this paint scheme took, I think I did this paint scheme over the course of about four nights, um, a little bit in the mornings. And when you paint again, try and think about when stuff's going to be dry, when stuff's going to be ready for the next sort of paint level. Um, and yeah, carry on really with, with, with that and you'll speed your painting up dramatically. You know, I, if you've watched the channel obviously a lot, you'll realise I tend to drop a video every Sunday. So by that metric and method, I must paint that unit within the week. Sometimes it doesn't work if I've been away for work or lot, whatever. But the techniques and methods of painting do tend to be fairly quick. Use a wet palette quite a lot of time. Um, and those things as you will have, will have seen. So I don't, you know, uh, claim to be a, an amazing painter, but I do think this... Um, this method and techniques works particularly well and I think it looks really nice on these nights. So I'll try not to ramble too much now. Uh, I realise this video has turned more into a ramble video than it has turned into a techniques video, but hopefully it gives you an, an insight into what kind of I'm doing. Um, and you see here when I'm painting, trying to be neat and tidy, I was using a bit of a green cloth there because I've noticed with the, the nights particularly, you're holding the physical model a lot rather than being able to use like a painting handle or something. And when you're holding the physical model a lot, you're putting your grease from your fingers you put whatever on there's a danger you're going to start rubbing paints off particularly on corners um so you know although i do physically hold the model if i'm going to hold it for a long period of time i tend to 
try and have a, a cloth in my hand or something like that or like you can see here i will stand it on the painting desk while i'm i'm using it to try to minimize the amount of physical contact with that paint that's just a again another sort of hint and tip so last dregs of the paint scheme here we're moving into some technical paints um, and then really the paint scheme is kind of finished exactly like any of my other uh, Nurgle paint schemes so really that's kind of it uh, hopefully you've liked what you've seen on the channel today something a little bit different for this night tyrant and that's what I would encourage you know whatever you're doing this it's it's a fun hobby don't get caught into having to do the same thing every time you know i particularly like looking at models and armies and thinking what can i do different with that model next for my own enjoyment to make it look a little bit unique um but also it, it keeps you entertained and in the hobby trying to think up new ways of doing stuff for your army so i'd encourage you to do the same deck are a brilliant army for doing this experimentation with I've said it multiple times if you're going to start trying to do conversions and do work and stuff like that brilliant army to do it with and we find ourselves to the finished article so if you did like that like comment subscribe all the youtube jazz said before check me out on instagram or facebook and keep an eye on the channel for the next lot of nurgle i'm working towards a big 10,000 point army for a big game we're doing so there's a lot more nurgle to come hopefully i'm not boring you all and repeating the same stuff again and again uh yeah i'll see you on another video